We finished the last episode by saying that although we had a counter component that has the functionality we need and is passing all the tests, we think there's some tidying up that can be done to the actual implementation of the counter. What you should notice is that at no point during this episode will we ever look at the counter in the browser. If you've got a component and you've got a suite of tests around it that cover all the key bits of functionality, you can work on React components without having to constantly refresh the browser and manually click buttons to make sure things are working. I'm not saying you can always avoid that. There are times where you will have to fire up a browser and click around to make sure things are working as you want them to. But on the whole, you can cover a lot of functionality in tests and avoid constantly jumping out of your editor into a browser. This workflow of having the editor with the tests on the same screen and having the test rerun is one I use a lot and it helps me be really productive. So just to remind you, this is what the render function of our counter looks like. We have an increment button and a decrement button and they call an increment function and a decrement function. These increment and decrement functions are really where I think we can make a lot of improvements. Effectively, these functions are exactly the same. They just have this count that is different. We either add one or we remove one. What if we wrote a function that would return us a function that could either increment or decrement? The function I want is going to be called something like make incrementer, and we'll call it with an amount to increment by. This will either be one or negative one for the decrement version. Subtracting one, remember, is the same as adding negative one. So you can think of the decrementer as an incrementer that is incrementing in negative one steps. So I'm going to say make incrementer is a function that will take an amount and return another function that will actually be the event handler. So what I can say is make incrementer will be a function that takes an amount and returns another function that will set the state. So make incrementer takes an amount and returns us the function that will be the event handler that can be called when we click either the increment or the decrement button. So I'm going to go down to the increment function and just copy this set state call and we'll paste it in there. And this stays the same because we're going to set the state and we want to add to the count, but rather than adding one, we're going to add the amount that we were passed in. If I hit save, the test is still passing. That's not surprising. We're not actually using this make incrementer function yet. So now to define increment, Rather than define it as this whole block here, I can say it's the equivalent of calling this dot make incrementer, if I could type it, with one as the increment amount. If I hit save, our tests are still passing. Just to prove it, if I change one to two, we'll now see the test fail. The increment test is failing because we expected one, but we're now getting two because clicking is incrementing as two at a time rather than one. So the next step here is I can do exactly the same for decrement. I'll say it's the equivalent of make incrementer where the amount is at negative one, and I'll get rid of the old decrement function. That is now also passing. It's really powerful to have tests here because I don't have to go in a browser, I don't have to click around buttons. We can just know immediately that the tests are still green, which is really nice. We can do a couple of bits of tidying up to our incrementer as well, taking advantage of some newer parts of JavaScript and ES2015. We have an arrow function here that's returning an object. When you have that case, you can lose the return object in here and wrap the braces of the arrow function in a pair of parentheses. This now means that rather than those braces denoting the body of the arrow function, they're actually just the thing that's being returned. So if you have an arrow function x and it returns uh, an object where a is one, this here is invalid because it's reading these braces as the body of the function. If I wrap it in parentheses, JavaScript will understand that x is a function that returns an object. So by doing that, we can just make this incrementer a little bit more concise, and I can actually lose these braces around the incrementer here too if I want to. So there we have it, a short little refactor, but one that was made much easier by the fact that we had tests covering all the behavior we were working on. This meant that we could move much more quickly and not have to keep jumping out of our editor into the browser to make sure things were working as they should.